Hi everybody, this is Katie. I want to show you how this program is supposed to look like when it runs. So this is the Serendipity Booksellers program and you read the directions, the requirements that need to be in your program. So you're going to have different parts. So read through that very carefully. And then at the bottom here I have the sample output. I'm making that video now. So I've coded the program and I'm going to show you what it should look like when you have it done. Okay, so we have a points calculator. We have a menu. This is going to be an if-else, nested if-else decision. If the response to what they want to do is a point calculator, then we'll do P. Make sure you accept both upper and lower cases. That's what the requirements of the repro program say. And then from there, it'll ask you how many books were purchased. So let's say we got 11, well, let's say we got three books. And it'll tell you how many points you've earned. Now when you look at the requirements of the program, that data is right here. So the points calculator, this is what you're going to, to figure out. Based on how many books they entered or purchased that month, you'll assign points. So if I got three books, then I got 30 points. If I get four or more, I get 60 points. So that's just, again, nested if-else that assigns different point values um, based on how many points you have. Okay. The second uh, run of the program, make sure you go through yours and test them all too, by the way. The second run of your program, is uh, should do a shipping calculator. So you could hit capital or lowercase s and it'll take you to the shipping calendar calculator. What is the weight of your package that's being shipped? So let's say my book's worth 4.3 pounds and then it'll say the cost to ship that is 946. Well where that comes from is in this part of the assignment, the shipping calculator where depending on what your book weighs, there's a rate per pound. So my book was, what, 3.2 or 4.3. So it's um, over 2 pounds but not more than 6. So my rate was $2.20. And then to find what your cost is, you're going to take that uh, $4.30 times, or $4.30, uh, the weight of the book, times the 220. So if we run that in our calculator, that should be the shipping cost. So it was 4.3 pounds <coughs> times 220 a pound, and 946 is what it calculates out to. And that's exactly what my program calculated. So again, um, you know, depending on whatever they answer, less than two pounds, it's only a dollar ten t per pound to ship. So if it's one point, you know, for example, if it's one point eight pounds, then uh, what would that be? One point eight, or the pounds, the weight of the books, times the rate, one point ten and a dollar ninety eight to ship a book that's you know less than two well to ship a book that's one point eight what i i think that's what i said um so that's from there now the last part of your program and again you can run different numbers so when you're running these and you're testing things out this will be easier when we add loops but you know run a different shipping weight maybe make a, a one that's seven point five pounds and 7.5 pounds goes into the higher, uh, this one, within this range, it's not over 10, but it's between 6 and 10. So 370 times 7.5, that'll be this price. And the last option of our, whoop, the last option of our program, when we hit um, D, for our discount calculator, this is for the software that you could purchase through the company. And how many software packages were purchased? So let's say that we purchased nine and um, they were, let's just say $10 a piece, $10 you could enter. Uh, with nine, there's no discount. So after your discount is zero, your grand total is $90. 
Now where that comes from is this requirement down here. 10 to 19 or less than that. Oh, I'm sorry. 10 to 19 is 20. I only bought 9, so that's a zero discount. Um, if I bought 20 to 49, it would be a 30% discount. So let's run it so we can check it with some different values that actually come out to something. Oh, I think I have two instances of that open. Okay, D. And let's say I bought 35 pieces of software, and the software was 99 cents a piece. It's really cheap, really cheap software. So we got a 30% discount, and the discount is 1039 with a grand total of 24.25. We're not going to round or deal with that at this point. So again, what you do with that one is you would take how many pieces of software you purchased. That would, that would um, uncover what your discount rate is. And then from there, you could calculate what your purchase, what your total is due. So how you would calculate that is something like, okay, 35, you'd calculate the discount after you figured out the rate. You could say um, the base price would be 35 times 99. We could do this off, we could hand check this off to the side. So $35 times 0.99 and then um, we have a 30% discount. So let's keep that number, 3465. I had to write that down because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget it. This is, that's the first step that you need to do when you're doing your calculations. And uh, we are then going to take that number, whoops, I didn't mean to just delete it, 34.65, and we're multiplying it by 30% because that's our discount. So 10.395, and then our last calculation would be the price, which was the base price, 34.65, minus 10.3. 9, 5 to give us what is due. So those are the three steps that have to help happen when you calculate. Now this program details, it doesn't tell you all of the uh, mathematics that has to happen, but you can figure that out as um, you're designing your program. So that's a sample run. The last one that your program will do is end. So when you double click or when you run your program and they don't enter a PSD, upper or lower case, and anything else like a Q, it ends the program. So that's sample interaction.